Welcome to the nonsense sus. The nonsensus. We're going to call this episode one of the nonsensus. Welcome, everyone. That's a weird thing to say about an audio recording that you're absorbing at any potential moment in any potential timeline. And that's the really interesting thing to me about this is that, is it a time capsule? Is the purpose of taking a nonsensus for review to, to recall or to recount? Is this, is this how we will, how they, because it won't be us in the future, right? I don't know what you think's going on metaphysically, existentially or whatever, bro, or bro debt. Or, you know, maybe we do away with the concept of bros and brodettes in the future. Who, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe you're hearing me right now, and it's like the recent future of this moment. Because I'm in a moment right now, and I'm in this, I'm in this cube, and I'm speaking in what seems to me like real time. But, or and trying to not say but so much we say but so much where it's just like a pause would have been fine there's no reason to you know there's no reason to make a distinction all right we're getting off to a weird start and that's appropriate because what the nonsensus is and what i would like to you know just kind of graze against with this first episode is well, I don't know. I don't know what, what a nonsensus is. I have, I have no plans but dreams. I have aspirations of what we can achieve with the nonsensus. I think it's very important for this first episode to be just me. By the way, I'm your host, Zachary Winchester. I am a nonsense man. Well, I am a magical chargal uh, currently existing within, or one might say through. Uh, I am a magical chargal inside of a nonsense man. Um, and I can talk. I can, I can make mouth sounds that are symbols, that mean something to someone, perhaps you right now. And it could go on forever with this not making any kind of declarative statements or not elucidating anything about the human experience or just reality at large, and that's okay. That's okay. So the next episode of this, uh, I'm going to be speaking with Sarah Hall, who is an angel therapist. And I imagine with that episode, uh, the question will be, or a question, or the first one I'm going to ask is, well, what's that? What, is that? what, what does that do? Um, I am... And I don't use this word much, but I'm going to now. I am, I am blessed and super duper grateful to have encountered and, and really, really made sincere, awesome friendships with a lot of really interesting folks. Or as I sometimes say, some, I know some super duper magical chargals and more are out there. And that, isn't that interesting? Like, interesting isn't even the word. It's, it's fascinating doesn't even cut it it's it's awe-inspiring to think that there's seven billion humans on this planet right now and you know the infinite nonsense generator of what is out there in terms of like think of the most electric turtle that you know there might be somebody out there who is like and you know we're not it's not a competition and there's no objective way of grading this but there might be someone out there who, like, is even more so the, the sort of uh, person that you want to get in your life. Or perhaps just, you know, hear from. Th th it happens to me all the time with this internet thing. So, there's this thing, the internet. And, you know, because you, you might be listening to this right now and you may not be a human. You may not be of or even from Earth. Uh, you, you could be anything, uh, and I know people who, like, objectively, or not even objectively, like, through the lens of science, 
they're human beings. But I know people who don't identify as human beings. Uh, it's really uh, funny and interesting. I mean, sometimes I don't identify. I, I, didn't I just refer to myself as a magical charcoal? Uh, but there's this internet. And so this right now, that is the mode of, of broadcast that the nonsensus will use right now at this point in human present history. Uh, and I have been on the internet myself just browsing around and found another human being who was speaking, who was being recorded making symbolic mouth sounds as I am now, and it lit my night up. It lit my world up. I've been about to go to sleep and just heard a turtle talking and was like, what now? There can be no rest for the nonsense. It must continue. And I, I, I feel like it will be short work to make that happen with this. Now, maybe I should get into it right now. You want to hear something? You want to hear something that, that, that does that for me? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. I'm going to try. So we exist. I'm, ex I'm assuming a lot with that. But so you're, you're hearing this right now, and that means you, you either have some translator squid that is implanted into your ear that translates the English that I'm speaking right now to whatever tongue you understand. Uh, but I imagine that there's a few of you right now who are hearing me speaking in English right now. So then one can assume that you are a, a human and that you have a similar similar omnibus, a similar, similar catalog of, of stuff that you know and, and think about uh, and, and understand and deal with as me. So I'm just going to say it how I say it to myself, and this, this gets me going. So as humans, we're guaranteed by, by being born, you're guaranteed to, to go down to Suffertown. And guess what we do there? Uh, you, however, can effort towards heaven. I have experienced heavenly moments here. However, the thing about existing as a human being is that the, the suffering is like guaranteed. You're gonna. You're gonna. I, I remember when it first struck me that existential crises and like being depressed or having imaginary problems, like, like intellectual problems that take thought. You know, there's no, there's no physical thing obstructing your way. I, I always ask myself, is this a real problem or, or an imaginary problem? A flaming truck blocking the bridge that you need to get across, that's a, that's a real problem. You will need a real solution to solve that. You might want to put the fire out first with real, real water, and then you got to get the truck out of the way, and you're going to need physical means to do that. I mean, maybe you have the ability to do a Jedi mind trick, and but still, that would be that would be real. Because I mean, maybe that maybe there's some telekinetic stuff that we are capable of that's totally scienceable. We just haven't scienced for it yet. Anywho, I'm getting way off track. In order to have the the imaginary problems and uh, the 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 thoughtful, the intellectual slash emotive problems that sometimes drive humans to kill themselves. Y usually, or I won't say usually, because who knows the current statistics at the time that you're listening to this, but I've, I've, I've absorbed some, some factoids that led me to believe that when we have real problems and we're fighting for survival, it's, it's less likely that we get so sad that we literally kill ourselves. And... So to me right now, with how much I'm enjoying life, and it, it was a good day, it was a great day, but I have, I have bad days, I have bad days. But even in, even in, my, in my darkest hours, the, the idea of, of uh, hating my existence, or uh, I've heard it called when the fear of life outweighs the fear of death, because uh, I think we are all inherently afraid of death. I got some friends who like to be all, bro, I'm not afraid of, afraid of death, bro. It's like you do not know until you are going up that roller coaster and and you're at the top you know you don't you don't know it's like that it was a quote like everybody thinks they have a plan until until a sword is coming at their face um you you know you know you i don't i don't think that folks can predict 
how they will react to I'm about to shed my mortal coils. Anyway, when I think of being so upset with existing that I gotta get out of this body and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kill it to, 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 to relieve the discomfort of, of, of being me another moment, that has to suck. That's some crazy suffering, right? And that happens to a lot of people who have all of the things that a lot of, of me and, and my friends complain about not having. They just got that stuff. The, the wealth and affluence and the, 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 the opportunity, the, 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 the silver spoon, if you will. Uh, for me, I, 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 don't, I don't really want wealth and affluence to just get fun stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm in this place like I just I love meaningful, m- meaningful efforts. I like, I like to have goals that I'll never obtain. I like to climb up the, the what was the Astro Craig on Global Guts? Is that too esoteric of a reference? Anyway, uh, I like to seek things where there is no, there is no reaching the zenith and grabbing the trophy. I like, I like the sort of ladder matches where you don't climb up and grab the belt and then fall down in victory because you won, you grabbed the belt. I like never ending twisty, windy ladders where it's just like, I'm just gonna try to, like right now the thing that I got going is I'm, I'm just gonna try to maximize my, I don't know, goodness. I'm just gonna try to, I'm just gonna live, be the most magical turtle that I can be. I'm just trying to externalize the turtle I am inside because I got a lot of really, really good, and good is, you know, good is always in air quotes for me because who, who who knows? That's that's like the most subjective idea. What is good and what is bad? Some have just suggested that we could do away with the ideas of good and bad. Uh, however, I I'm on I am on a mission. I cannot explain it to you simply, but the thing that I was trying to say with this is so suffering guaranteed, right? Feeling good and having moments of of bliss, euphoria happiness or what I think is super duper lightning bolt lightning bolt lightning bolt is moments where it's not just happiness because what you've got going on is fun or you know you got super duper laid uh not downplaying how much joy can be felt through things like getting super duper laid or you know just we just moments of we can be really really good but I I feel the most of 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 the lightning as I call it when um, I feel not only that I have achieved but I'm on the path as some may say that I am hashtag doing the thing and and being the thing in the world and that's 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 changed so much my values over the last so I'm 30 now or I'm I'm in my 30th year of life. But 29 is, I don't want the extra syllable, so I've been telling folks that I'm 30. I don't know if that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a white lie, right? That's, I, I mean, I, I usually then give this little disclaimer that I'm just, I'm in my 30th year of life, so. Uh, my value of what I want from life has changed so much in the last five years. I used to think that it was an event, and it was uh, grabbing the, the title belt uh, you know, climbing up the ladder, grabbing the thing, and then you got it, you get it, you get it. But what I've noticed is every time you win a ladder match, you're not, it's not over. You know, there's going to be, there's going to be more wrestling to be done next Monday. And it goes on and on and on. I'm back into wrestling again now. I used to, I used to love, love wrestling. I loved Goldberg. Goldberg actually led me to finding out that I'm uh, ethnically Jewish ish because I like Goldberg. And then I, inquired about anyway um neither here nor there i haven't said the thing yet this is the thing that like lights me up so your so life has suffering guaranteed and it can have just as much and i'm beginning to think beyond 51 percent, it can be joy and laughter and and love and you know we'll, we'll we will discuss love at length uh in future nonsensuses, I feel like I need another human to discuss love because my idea of it is just, it's, it, it is so thine own. Uh, but that's a thing, and a lot of folks value love. But uh, happiness, 
joy, uh, meaningful pursuits. I'm so into meaningful pursuits right now because I find that if you got, if the self-eating snake, if the, if the candle is, is a flame at both ends, because you know you're gonna die, and that's just known. That's, that's one of the few things that I feel pretty sure about because there's a lot of things that seem super duper obvious and like, you know, the, the consensus is in about certain stuff, but I don't, I don't have any, I, I'm, I'm gonna age and, and wither and die and there'll, there'll be some, there'll be some hurdy, ouchy, oh, there's a lot of awkwardness, but I've come to appreciate the sacred awkwardness. Anyway, there's some stuff that is gonna be in your life is just gonna be you know you literally get birthed and you're covered in blood and you're upset <laughs> like I, has there ever been a baby who came out and was just like oh yeah this yeah, no no one no 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 babe that i have ever seen born uh because you know because I, I i go to where that's happening i've watched thousands of births they just they just let me observe no i've never i've actually never been present for a baby being born and i totally averted my eyes when we watched that video uh, in school. Did we watch a video in school? Did I like, at some point there was a video of, of, of a baby being born in front of me and I remember being like, nope, not, nope, not, nope, not, nope, don't want that in my, um, they come out, they're freaking out. You're, you were, you were born bloody and screaming. And then you had, and then if you're born into, into Western civilization from the, the, you know, uh, contemporary modalities that I'm, you get, you get cut, you get, you get your, you get your, your, your link to, to your mother, to the safe, warm, comfortable place. You get that cut with blades. I got my dick cut. They cut my dick. Welcome to earth. They cut my dick upon arrival into existence. And God, I could go I, as I go back and forth on whether or not that was a good thing. Because there's there's pros and cons. Uh, I've talked to turtles who had their their circumcision botched, and then that's that's just that is uh, that's a that's dark. I'd be so pissed. I'd want to find I'd want to find the one who did it and just and just at least give them a strongly worded guilt trip, but maybe just fight them in the streets. Not even because I think that would make anything better, because I don't really believe in in uh, reciprocated justice you know justice through revenge uh but just to make myself feel better because i would just i would just need i would need someone to lash out on anyway ooh, i went i went dark there we'll go dark we'll go dark uh what was i talking about yeah so you're born and immediately it's uncomfortable and you're crying and you get and you get cut jeez louise jeez louise chicago illinois 60652 my god it starts that way and then, you know, you start easing in. There's moments, you know, babies start, oh, this is cool. This is okay. I exist. Oh, my Lord. And if you got, like, if you have the, you know, we don't know. There's not, like, a one-size-fits-all for what makes a human being with the emotional tools and the fortitude and the the just, you know, some may say being surrounded by unconditional love uh, sort of factors that make for a human that is that is not only capable but like you get really some of us get really good at feeling good and extract extracting moments of 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 happiness and even downright bliss from this uh and some of us just <laughs> just go down to Suffertown the whole the whole the, the, the most of the ride i know i know some folks who are just really really good at su suffering it out here and uh and you know it, whether or not that's the hand that's dealt or, or the path that's chosen, you know, I, you know, I empathize myself because I was a one who used to choose suck. Like I used to, I, I, I willingly drove out of my way to go to Suffertown and not just to pass through. Like I hung out there. I used to hang out there a lot. Um, and I still, you know, I, I pass through. Everybody does often because, you know, it's, it's on the way to a lot of really awesome destinations but uh i don't i don't pilot myself there on purpose no i kind of do sometimes because i i uh i, I i'll do um entheogenic or uh, psychedelic uh cons consumables uh psycho spiritual technology and part of that experience for me and it's more actually as i as i go forward on what may be called 
uh, the, the hero's journey. I'll just say the turtle's journey because that, that calling oneself a hero is a, is a bit gauche. Uh, but, you know, I think we're all on a sort of hero's journey of our own. Um, and, yeah, with, uh, you know, psil psilocybin mushrooms. For me, the, a psilocybin mushroom experience includes terror and suffering and a, a sort of, like, you know, like when, when, the, when, the, when the dude becomes a werewolf, it looks like it sucks to become a, once you're a werewolf it's like oh you get to go and do werewolf stuff but like becoming a werewolf is this <laughs> stuff sprouting out of your back and you know something you gotta depending on what canon of werewolf story like you gotta tear your flesh off to expose it just looks like it looks problematic i mean i've seen ones where it seems more of like uh, more like orgiastic I saw a movie where there's all these these beautiful ladybird uh, werewolf turtles, and they they, they they look like they were having a good time with it. But most of the time, uh, in fiction with werewolves, it looks like it sucks. Uh, real world werewolves that I've encountered, they they suffer it out too. It looks, it, it, I mean, it's a bummer to become. Anyway, there's this like, this metamorphosis thing that that at moments is uncomfortable, uh, and not just with, you know, I feel like I'd, every time. I don't need to mention the psycho spiritual technology um, entheogens. Uh, you know, a couple uh, particulars would be uh, psilocybin mushrooms, DMT, ayahuasca, stuff of that nature. I mean, because it's 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 that's how life is. It's just like I find that those those experiences condense like how a month of human experience it like condenses how how much stuff it happens and gets felt in a month that condenses that to over the course of a few hours so i don't ever have to really mention that but i understand that it's like ooh, did he just say did he is he talking about the is he talking about the the that i know about the that um because it's like this secret club of folks who who know about the that and who who have experienced the that and i gotta say like i don't I don't ever want to, and I did this on accident before a lot, and I feel like a jerk about it, but sometimes folks who are into that stuff will talk about it in this way that kind of identifies themselves as being part of some sort of cognitive elite because, because they've experienced that. And, I mean, one, they d psychedelics do not necessarily level everyone up. It, I do think that it provides uh, a very opportune opportunity there's a lot of potential uh with those tools they can be used as tools uh and there's some folks who are really really reverent uh, about them and really serious about that this is not a toy um i'm not on that team i think that like everybody live your life there are certain things that have built-in repercussions i mean if you're if you try to have a, a recreational dmt night out you know on a at a theme park on, on a dance floor, <laughs> whatever. Like, if that, it, I, I think that that might, I've heard folks have, I've heard some nightmarishly difficult experiences happen because someone set out to, to treat something uh, as a recreational toy and then, you know, they kind of got humbled by the brass dick of God sort of thing. Uh, however, I am so not, I'm so not your dad. I am so not your father and I love that. I don't want, they're, the only things that I feel strongly about telling turtles not to do is uh, don't, try your best not to have victims. And certainly don't if you know that the thing that you're going to do is gonna victimize someone, then don't do it. Then that, that I would say, no, don't. Don't be that kind of a dick. Do not, do not hurt for the sake of hurting. Do not try to extract what sh should be a mutually enthusiastic experience with others. Do not have victims. Any of you, don't do that. So that's the only thing that I'll get like authoritative about. Uh, but other than that, like live your life. And there's consequences if you're, if you're being super meddlesome, like meddling. M E D D L E, because like not the same as like metal and be metal. If you want to be be metal as fuck, bro. If like 
enjoy chew the food like enjoy your life and and there's it's a game of minesweeper of little patches of this super duper nightmarish experiences can happen uh from certain things and as i said it's kind of unavoidable so i just i just want everybody to have just just as wonderful of a life as possible and i know what the effort to achieve that looks like for me uh and i love now that i feel like at least intellectually humbled and i have a visceral feeling of that i don't know what's best for you or anyone anyone i can i can i can get to know a person as much as we understand a route to becoming connected you know like i could we could learn each other's entire life story and and our families could be all connected and stuff and we could be working together on the, 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 the missions that we feel are the most meaningful pursuits possible. We could be, we could, we could dock genitals and we could be inside of each other, making eye contact, breathing into each other's mouths. And still, I don't know you <laughs> enough to know what's best for you. We just, we just, you know, you just, you just gotta pay attention. You just gotta, you just, cause I'm weird. I, I like I'm weird is a weird word because weird doesn't have a definition. Um, I'm I feel kind of unpredictable, at least to others. Like I understand that sometimes I I I will respond out of left field, or I'll just feel differently all of a sudden. I've had uh, romantic sexual relationships where I just just it all went away so quickly. I just no longer felt things, and I've learned to no longer try to to. Uh, try with some of the some of these things in life are so bloody they can be so significant and if you treat them like a like a like a toy that you just fiddle about with i think there's baked in consequences to that so i ain't got to tell somebody what not to go and learn for themselves cuz you'll learn it for yourself uh, but don't be a cosmic douche face. Don't be d don't don't be lucidly terrible if you if you can avoid it, you know. And I think that's having victims. There's this thing, the Constitution, uh, and this this is like my code, and I've been working on it for a while, and I'm always gonna be working to try to live by it because I for me these three things, they're like non rules. I'll just say it. This is the Constitution. This is as a knight of nonsense, and I don't know what that is, but we're figuring it out. Um, as a knight of nonsense, I, I live by by this code. One, don't try to define it. Nobody knows what this is. It's one of the most magical things about reality, right? No one knows what this is, what we're doing, what we should do about it, where we came from. Certainly no one has I have I've heard nothing that resonated as the answer for why we're here, which then would I imagine that would have some clues and cues about what I should do. I just I have not heard anyone say anything that seemed like the truth about what this is. So like no one knows what's going on. And I think that's magical. I think that's great. I think it's sometimes it's spooky. But this is what we're doing. We're here. Don't try to define it, number one. Two, don't take this seriously. Or don't take it too seriously. There's, I, I do not see overwhelming evidence. It is not self-evident that this is meant to be taken seriously. And boy, I've just been having so much of my own like visceral subjective and I think that spiritual for, spiritual for me is kind of a synonym for subjective it's like when I say we're about to get spiritual or magical I mean we're about to convince ourselves of some things that we can't know in the same way we can know how much this weighs you know sort of thing or you know uh, the, the things that are sciencible uh, we're, we're dealing with feelings and beliefs of things that are immeasurable 
So I, I feel my my door isn't closed, but I feel pretty convinced that we can you can laugh. You can laugh, you can be silly. You might not have to get serious any more than those those experiences in life where that will make you get serious. Like I, I get serious sometimes because the situation seems so serious, but as it goes, and in retrospect, all of my suffering, like all of my personal tragedies, I laugh about them. In retrospect, I'm okay. And it's, and, and it, and it's pretty funny to think about how much I squirmed and, and how I'm through the fire of that. And it's like, I don't know, I, 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 I love reality, or at least I really feel that way right now. I love what we got going on here. Uh, and I wouldn't love it so much if it wasn't for humor. Humor is so important, so please don't take it seriously. That's like, that's, that's a, I, I try not to be the, you know, the authority that gives the orders, and I don't feel too firm about advice unless somebody asks me, what do you think that I could do that would make this better for me? And uh, I have not been asked because this is a soliloquy right now, but I really, I highly suggest not taking this too seriously. Uh, it's very much helped me. My grandmother, my nana, just recently became a stingray. That's a Moana reference. She became one with the tortoises. Um, and before she died, I, I got to have some moments with her where she just conveyed to me it was like you know sometimes it seems like your interactions with a person are messages from what you could call god it's just like this person just became a channel of the truth and my nana had such a sense of humor about her own mortality her own death uh when she was in her 80s one time i remember she she came uh, to this uh, American classic car show that I was DJing, and I gave my little spiel uh, announcing the the winners of this car show, uh, the Jeff Holbrook in the in the '74 Trans Am. I don't know anything about cars. I don't know if if it, what I just said might not exist. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody named Jeff Holbrook, but anyway, um, you know, I give my little spiel, and she's and I can see her her famous uh, Jeep Cherokee, white Cherokee in the parking lot and I know that she's there and she heard me and so I, I, I see her in my eye and I'm like okay after I get my little spiel I'm gonna go over and say hi to my nana and and we're probably gonna go out to eat or something so I'm walking up with with you know probably gonna say something like hey nana where are, where, where are we going to eat you want me to drive with you or get a and and she beats me to the intro and she's like you talk good Zach you should give my eulogy I want you to give my eulogy like with the most light-hearted like there was a laugh in there like you should give my eulogy <laughs> and i was like well nana i i said something to the effect of like i i accept i will and i'm honored that you would ask uh but isn't that a bit morbid for you to just come out of left field with that and she said this she goes well less morbid now <laughs> and it's like that is how i shall remember her uh and the message that she helped bestow to me that has the 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 the, the visceral emotional psycho spiritual evidence that that only i decode in my own language has been screaming at me my whole life chargel don't take it seriously like yeah not just don't take it seriously because that's like negative but i like to i like to I, I approach the world with negatives because i don't know what this is i know what it isn't or i know what it is not just that I, this is not just a place this is not just a place that we came to suffer this is not just a torture chamber i'm sure of that there's more there's more and i've, I've seen it i've experienced it i've it's it's out there and humor is the best i love humor i love humor um and the third non-institutional non-rule sort of thing and this is this is the this is the central most axiom of my ethics my morals regarding how i deal 
with other humans. And this took, this took a bit for me to happen upon this, but number three, don't do anything mutual without mutual enthusiasm. Perhaps it would be better said, don't attempt anything that involves more than one person, more than one consciousness, more than one whatever we are. If there's, if there's an activity, an experience that takes two to tango, don't try without mutual enthusiasm, not just consent. Like, both parties need to be sincerely into this. Like, yes, like, I've heard somebody say, it's either hell yes or it's fuck no. Uh, you know, we, 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 we throw the word consent around so much, and consent just means l being okay with it, saying like, okay, that, that can be, and, I, and I've been in a lot of things where I just, I, you know, I just said it was okay to like, you know, and I'm not just, I'm not just talking about sex, I'm talking about any, anything, like, there's certain communities where hugging upon introduction is expected, and this is this might cause social repercussions in my life, but I don't want to be hugged when I'm first meeting everybody. I really don't like it. I would like to. I really wish it was it was understood that it's like upon first meeting, it's like handshake, or maybe we don't always. I don't. Want, sometimes I really don't want to be touched, but uh, but I, it's just the thing. Is like it's it's uh, that's the sacred awkwardness of life. It's like, all right, because do I want do I want like my initial like hey I'm Zachary and I don't want to touch you like I don't want that to be the uh, the, 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 the first impression, as they say. There's numerous reasons where I, that's, that's not, uh, that, that, that is not uh, a paramount uh, thing for me to, to inform the world that, that I don't, don't always feel like, like, uh, like um, pressing our chests against each other upon meeting you. Um, but the thing, anything, uh, like chess, chess, chess. I love chess. I like playing chess. If you don't know how to play chess, no fun at all. If you, if you, if you noteworthily suck at chess and your opponent is pretty confident, it's going to be stupid. It's going to be no fun. Uh, so I'm not trying to talk people into games of chess. Um, hockey video games. I love playing the sport of hockey in a video game. Um, but if you're not into that, I'm not going to try to talk you into it because it's not. It, it's so not fun when you try to play Wayne Gretzky's three Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey with somebody who's like, I'd rather do Mario Kart or Mario Party or just this is. I, I hate this. It's not going to be fun at all. Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I enjoy Rocky Horror Picture Show. I was I was raised on Rocky Horror Picture Show. I saw it when I was a, a little child, which which you know is weird to some people because there's like there's some weirdness in that, and I didn't understand when I was a little kid. And I think I think I think my mother was 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 in the right to to expose us to that because uh one we didn't experience any of the naughty stuff why we didn't understand any of the naughty stuff that we were observing when we were little children and uh it was also like a, it was a good, it's a good introduction to all that stuff sexuality and whatnot um uh, another thing okay uh great great metaphor is uh um butt stuff like there there are people who are all about and will re request specifically uh, to be stimulated uh, in the butt or uh, on the butt with their their they, their 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 butt I used to not say butt I used to thought it was a silly word now I'm so in it in the butt <laughs> butt uh, I'm doing I for I've actually I just got the equipment for my friend to do a coffee enema on myself tonight uh, and and you know it's really funny about that when people used to talk about coffee enemas before I've never done it um I envisioned just uh, just make a cup of coffee and get yourself a beer bong and just boof a, a, hot, a hot frappuccino. Um, wait, frappuccinos are cold. Are they? Is that? Anyway, uh, yeah, butt sex. There's some people who are so not about that life, and there's some people who are all about that life. And who the fuck? Well, I remember a time when I was actually, never mind. You should never try to talk somebody into that, you know? Because it's like, you're either, I mean, you're, you're, you're into it or you're not, and just, you know, if, 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 if you go out there and uh, if you have a vibrant social life, you'll meet somebody who will, who will specifically request that you do stuff to their butthole. Anyway, that was, 
I'm sorry I went there. Uh, I'm not sorry. Uh, but yeah, mutually, mutually enthusiastic about every mutual act. Don't do anything without me is an acronym for M-E, mutual enthusiasm. Uh, I just think that, that that's, 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 that's it, right? For the whole, you know, not being, being a bad when you're here. Because, you know, there's things that are naughty. Like, I, I, I consider myself to be, I'm, I'm fairly naughty. I'm into some, some naughty and somewhat hedonistic things. I'm calming down a lot. But there's nothing nefarious. There's no, I have no nefarious desires. Um, synonym for nefarious. Uh, sinister. Or uh, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want, I'm not okay with people being hurt accidentally even. I feel incredible guilt. It's a, that's, a, that's a baked in consequence to when I'm not careful. If somebody gets, gets hurt uh, by my expressions, it sucks. That, that's, it, it sucks to realize that happened on accident. So, I mean, I'm now hyper aware of trying my best not to be hurty, uh, but life, life is such chaos. I have heard it said, it's chaos, be kind. Uh, and kindness, kindness is such a, such a topic. Because I don't think it's the same as being nice. Because, like, reality, I'd say reality is kind. Like, some people aren't into the word God. I'm into the word God because it's con I think it's conversationally convenient now. There was a time where I was so not into it. And there was a time where I was super into it in a really uh, into bro sort of way. Um, I would have to unpack what I mean by into bro. Uh, there was a time where I was all into telling people, you know, you are God. You know, we are all God. Did you know that, like, did you know that? Um, and, and that's one of those, like, it's, it's like a half-wise statement because you are from the all. And by the way, for, for me, God just means the all, right? So there, there's no, um, like, the question, do you believe in God? It's, uh, I think it's, it's like a silly question to, to me now. At the level of analysis that I am considering things at it's like do you believe in god it's the do you use that word do you think it's a useful word because the question is what is god what is love uh, i'm gonna bring this to a close because i just wanted to uh, you know kind of kind of uh explain but as I've said I don't know what this is and I certainly don't know what it's gonna be I've got some plans certainly got some dreams but the nonsensus is just folks talking and the thing that I feel makes it a nonsensus is that I know that I don't know and the widely understood widely understood truths seem to change as humans evolve or our understandings evolve or just our instruments of observation change but and not but and not knowing is not an excuse to just not do anything you know uh, I, I feel I can make declarative statements without with being kind of lucid that I, that I'm a nonsense man and I don't really know what I know I feel very strongly about some stuff and I think it's it's enjoyable to express uh, and I can't wait to have the conversations that we're gonna have uh, so this has been a soliloquy. And yeah, I didn't quite finish the thing that I was going to say <laughs> about the, you know, suffering. Like, so, life, so life has suffering, and there's the potential to have joy and love and theatrics and drama and humor and 
just there's just so much wonderful stuff that can be experienced that can be lived here in life and i've really found that it's almost like there's a choice of like don't do it all don't don't you know do this at all or do it absolutely as much as best as you can i'm either going to escape the whole scenario of being a human being and having consciousness and doing the thing either either escape it and i don't see that as an option and i don't want to i have n i feel like i have no choice but to do as best as i can to be the best of whatever i am it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful predicament and i like to call it a predicament i know there's some folks who are like don't be negative but i am a nonsense man and this is the nonsense is it is yeah i don't know what reality is but i know what it isn't so this is this has been episode one of the nonsensus what else is there to say <laughs>